My name is Fluffy Temper and I have quite the list of things to make today. My friend and I are going to a convention this weekend <coughs> and in honor of saving money I'm going to make us snack some food so we don't have to eat out all three days. So I'm going to start with breakfast. We are going to make bagels today. Bagels today. Um, the only recipe I could find for bagels, interestingly enough, is going to make me weigh things. So I have my scale and I have it zeroed out. This will be a little more exact than I would normally do, um, but we're still going to get it close enough. All these recipes can be found on bakelikeafluffy.food.blog. Um, please help yourself. I should probably, I forgot the yeast. Let's go grab it. So at some point during the stream, uh, my dad's going to call. Um, my swamp cooler is not working, and uh, he's going to help walk me through um, diagnosing it because it is so freaking hot in here. All right, so this says 300 milliliters of water. Oh, and I have ounces and grams. Oh, this is going to be interesting. We're not doing this today. Let's see. Milliliters. Oh, my nose. Allergies are so rough today. Come on. Where's the recipe? Recipe. Nobody knows. They want to tell me all about it. You know I really like those blogs that do the whole jump to the recipe thing. Although it's funny, I was looking at, um, we'll do a fruit leather um, once we get this rising, and what's absolutely hilarious about it is that there are, the actual ingredients are way at the bottom. It goes through the whole thing, how to make it, so does this one. It must be written by the same person. I just need the ingredients. This even says you can do bagel with avocado, and I still haven't come across the recipe. Oh, 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 oh. There it is. One and a fourth cups of warm water. Cool. So you don't want it too hot. Um, you want it wrist warm. Think nice bath water for a baby. You want to wake the yeast up, you don't want to cook it. All right, and then we're going to throw in two teaspoons of yeast. That looks cute. And then we're going to do some sugar. Where are you, sugar? Four and a half teaspoons. One, two, three, four, and a half. That looks good. <clears throat> Three and a half cups of flour. So there's one, two, three, and that looks like a half. So they want you to use a high gluten flour that's going to help make it. Um, more on the, the dense and rubbery side. <clears throat> so will the lye bath, which we'll, we'll get to later. One and a half teaspoons of salt. I got lost there for a second. All right. So we'll give this guy a little mix and then we'll knead it and then we'll set it to the side and let it rise and then We'll go ahead and start on the fruit leather and the beef jerky. I'm also going to, I got um, everything bagel seasoning because I think it'll be fun. Clearly never used it before, bought it today. So we won't overdo it too much on the inside, maybe a couple tablespoons, and then we'll sprinkle more on top. I'm 
guessing this is going to need more water. But let's put it out and see. So we're going to make a bowl and we'll add some more water. It's super dry here today. It doesn't surprise me that I have to add more water. So we're a little better there. We're going to add some more flour here. So I quit sticking to the table. We'll work it in. So if I remember the beginning of this recipe, it said that this is going to make eight bagels, but it might have said six. I guess it all depends on how big you want to make them. We're getting nice and smooth here. We'll keep folding and pressing it back together, getting all the, the little yeast guys to uh, make friends with each other. I love the way bread dough feels. And that includes bagel dough. All right, so when we're nice and smooth here and we kind of see the lumps disappearing, that's how you know you're done. So bagels we only let rise once and then we'll put them in a boiling lye bath once we uh, shape them. And then we'll put them in the oven. All right, we're looking nice and smooth here. <clears throat> drizzle in with a little oil. It is super dry today. So we'll coat them just a little bit. Normally I spray it with a pan spray. It's behind the camera. We're doing good today. Dampen up a towel with some warm water. And we're going to set this guy on the stove top. And we're going to let it rise. So we'll come back to that guy at the end. But we're going to switch to beef jerky. And then we'll do a fruit leather next. I've never actually made beef jerky. Um, I have done fruit leather a couple times. There's a good chance that I won't be on the stream in five hours. Um, so you can see the finished product, but I'll let you know if it fails or not. Wash in a bowl. So I know that I don't have enough space in my oven for everything that I want to make today. And to keep it at a super low temperature for fruit leather and beef jerky. So I currently have my grill outside on low. 
it is super hot today. Um, and the temperature on the grill is 200 degrees, which is a little hot. We don't want it to be over 100, uh, 180. Otherwise, it's going to cause us some problems. So I'll, I'll be popping in and out, make sure it keeps the appropriate temperature so we don't actually cook our fruit leather or beef jerky. All right. Beef jerky. Well, oven's ready. We have nothing to put in the oven yet. Come on. There's, oh, beef jerky. So we're gonna start with our meat. And then all of this stuff we're gonna end up sticking in our pan because we're gonna cook it a little bit and reduce everything. So I have a bottom round here. And we are gonna trim some of this fat here because I don't want to eat it. Not in beef jerky. That's not going to be fun. I wish you could give beef to chickens. I give other scraps to chickens, but I don't think the beef is the way to go. Alright, so we are going to slice this. We're going to do our best to keep the width all the same so it all cooks at the same time. I'm not too worried about the length. Apparently I need to sharpen my knife. See if I can do this one more time without losing a finger. There we go. I need a bigger pot. Bigger pan. I always need bigger pans. I feel like it's a story in my life. Alright. Wash my fingers before I touch everything else. Oh, I am most definitely going to need a bigger pan. Look, a bigger pan. Alright. So, we have about two pounds of meat in here. We're going to do one cup of soy sauce. It's actually very strange to me. I uh, did not have soy sauce in my refrigerator. So this container of soy sauce is 10 ounces. There are eight ounces in a cup. So we're going to do most of the bottle. <sighs> go, there you go, you can do it. So this will be a teriyaki 
Oh, that's not even close. Um, the recipe's calling it a teriyaki beef jerky. So I think it's going for the sweet and salty thing. All right. That's probably about right. And it says a third cup of Worcestershire sauce. I can't say that word to save myself. Make fun of me all you want. And there's some more salt in case we needed more. <coughs> All right, brown sugar. I'm getting rid of some of the salty now. With a whopping seven tablespoons of brown sugar. some of the spices of course I did all right so we're going to do black pepper I always feel like beef jerky is super peppery not complaining I have to say I like a little bit of kick and then we'll toss in some onion powder now this person cooks like I do they have no amounts for any of these. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Got some crushed red peppers. It says ground chilies. We're gonna go crushed ground pepper. Crushed red peppers. And then, come on, human, you've been the love of my life for the last couple days. Where are you? There you are. I don't know why I've been into cumin so much lately, but I love it. it. Makes me happy. All right, and then I do have the garlic powder out. Pop that one through. All right. Now, it says to marinate it. it looks marinated to me. Um, should have done this last night, but that would have not been fun for the stream. So, turn the grease until they want to touch. why I thought I cooked this first. Apparently I was losing my mind. Six hours after six hours, pat it dry, turn on the grill, ten minutes. Oop. We're gonna end up with meat sauce all over the place. Alright, so we're gonna set that to the side while we do our other guy that needs to go on the grill. Give ourselves some more space here. Where's my bowl? All right, fruit leather. Fruit leather is super easy. That's not the button I wanted to push. And that is. All right. Three cups of fruit. I have this wonderful tropical fruit blend. So we'll toss this in with some lemon juice and a little bit of sugar. Oh, they separated all of it. How fun is that? So what do we want to put in it? Oh, all of it. Can we just do all of it? Triple the recipe, double the recipe. Now oh, I think they are all... <laughs> now I get it. So I bought this when it was on sale, and it calls itself a smoothie mix. And I think I get it. They stuck all the tropical fruit into a little bag so you could pull it out and turn it into a smoothie. All right, we're gonna call that three cups. Pretty sure it's starting close. All 
right now we're going to add some lemon juice lemon juice makes fruit taste brighter there's no other way to really describe it it just makes it taste more like fruit and then three tablespoons of sugar So normally I'd have a lot of fun and I would put this in a food processor because that is so much easier. And uh, I got into a fight with a blender once, uh, threw it in the trash can and never got a new one. So we're going to use an immersion blender. These things are absolutely awesome. So we're going to smash everything down, turn it into a nice fruit puree. and smooth and no clumps. Get this guy out of the way. I love those things too much. I use you or use two of them. Or I own two of them. One for making soap and one for food. I don't know it bothers me to mix the two. So I'm gonna take my small pan and some parchment paper. so my fruit doesn't stick. There we go. And we'll spread it out so that it has a nice even chance to um, dehydrate and we don't have spots that aren't uh, aren't done before the rest of them. So I don't make fruit leather often, mostly because it takes like five or six hours. And I never want my oven on for five or six hours and I don't need another appliance, so I'm not going to buy a dehydrator. On really hot days, I will um, actually just stick it outside in the um, grill. Because the inside of a grill actually gets super hot. Pretend like it's been six hours. Oh, look, time flies. All right. And let's pop these guys out.
lay all these guys flat. The self almost doesn't fit in the pan. Doesn't fit in the pan, we're not going to fit in the grill. I feel like there's black pepper crumbled on top of this, so we'll do it if only just for looks. And I almost asked myself why there wasn't any salt in it, and then I remembered all the soy sauce we just put in it. There we go. Alright, I'm going to go take these things out to the grill. I don't know. Say hi to the dogs for me. So my grill with one burner on is sitting very happily at 160 degrees, which is right where we want it. Let's get some dishes done. Maybe wipe down some beef juice off my counter. And then we're going to go ahead and move on to our banana bread. dishes today and that does not make me happy. I hate dishes. But I do love this convention. It is a ton of fun and I look forward to trying to make uh, new and ridiculous things every year. I always figure if it doesn't work I can always stop by the grocery store and buy it on my way. exciting to me to think that I can use my grill as a dehydrator, although I don't know what the cost of running the propane for the next five hours is going to be, but it can't be any worse than running my uh, oven for the next five hours. I'm going to fill my pot back up with water. I'm going to need that later with the bagels. So when we are done with the banana bread, we're going to make some turkey sliders, and yes, I pre-bought the rolls. We gotta save time, we're gonna be here for hours. And um, we are also going to make some, did I say turkey sliders? Turkey sliders, ham and cheese wraps. Those are both on the menu. And then my all-time favorite sugar cookie recipe, and I will never go back to making a different recipe after trying this one. I love to share it with everybody I know. The first time I made it, 
it was, sorry, I was shaking there. It was for a donation. I had made a basket with the um, cookie flowers. I think edible arrangements, but I made it. Um, so I had the, the giant cookie flowers on them, and uh, it was beautiful. It came out really nice and tasted really good. All right, banana bread. So banana bread's one of my favorites. It's a, it's a staple for me because inevitably I buy four bananas with the best of intention and then them bananas go black. Because I usually eat at work and I have bananas at work. I don't know why I buy bananas for home because I know I want to make banana bread. All right, so four banana bread, this is one of those things where we are going to do the wet ingredients first, otherwise we will never get these bananas mashed in. So take your overly ripe bananas. Now, if you have overly ripe bananas and uh, you're getting worried they're gonna start growing things, pop them in the freezer. You can defrost a banana and it comes out of the peel as an ooey gooey mess and will make your banana bread super sweet. Oh, I love ads on my recipes. All right, a cup of sugar. Ooh. There was water in that. I thought this was my wet one. Apparently, they're both my wet one. What was I thinking? All right. <laughs> cup of sugar. Teaspoon of baking soda. There it is. Oh my goodness. So many ads. There's no butter in here. Sweet. Smashing up butter is a pain in the butt. All right. Let's do some salt. This says three ripe medium bananas. I have two. So we might have to do some more oil. One egg. Third cup of vegetable oil. Some vanilla extract, which I for some reason did not get out. I was feeling feisty today when I was getting ready, apparently. Oh, we might have to use a different extract. They're all behind you. Let's not do peppermint. Oh, orange. That's not going to work. Oh, I lied. Look, I got it ready. Sometimes I'm so on top of it, I surprise myself. All right, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Let's use the sugar to mash up our bananas here. Now, if you have kids, this is a great place to put them, to have them smash the bananas with their fingers and make it super smooth. Mother likes to tell me that it was one of my favorite things to do as a child was smash bananas and banana bread. Maybe that's why I like to make it so often. It has nothing to do with the fact that it tastes good. Alright, so there are smashed bananas. Looking nice and runny. Black ones and dry one today. One and a half cups of flour. Uh, that's like one and two thirds, but who's counting?
Oh, look at that. We are looking mighty pretty today. And a little boring. I think it needs nuts. Let me go to the freezer. I'll be right back. myself there for a minute. I thought it was out of nuts. How are you out of nuts? I'm never out of nuts. I buy stock in nuts. If I lived in the right climate, I'd buy a nut tree. Now, I don't have wal walnuts, so we're going all out and using pecans. Wait, I dropped one. This is also a good time to add chocolate chips if you want to, um, or whatever other kind of nonsense. You used to put in banana bread, or remembering banana bread. I miss my food processor. I miss my food processor so hard. You know, I never really understood the food processor until I got myself one, and I got myself one because the one at work broke, and while we were waiting for a new one now, mind you, food processors at my job are, you know, like $2,000. Um, a food processor at Walmart is 100 bucks for the nice one. Um, so I bought one just to get us by because we have to be able to chop things up um, for people who have no teeth or have difficulty swallowing. And I had run out as an emergency to go buy this while the other one was being ordered and delivered. Because when you spend that kind of money, everybody panics and it takes them forever to make a decision. And I'm currently in the same situation again. Yeah, and I miss it. But I never used one before then and I'm not big on kitchen appliances because I don't I really have a whole lot of space. I mean, I do it the best I can, but space is an issue. My house isn't that big. But the food processor, you can make butter with a food processor. You can chop nuts with a food processor. You can make a smoothie with a food processor. Make whipped cream with a food processor. Grind up dried things with a food processor. I love them. I love them. Pie crust, best pie crust you'll ever make, food processor. Um, that's a great cabinet. Let's try that again. Boyd, what are you doing? You can't invite the chickens into the house. They're not allowed to be in here. Buddy. Dog's making friends with everybody. I don't remember what I was doing. I think there was some kind of food delivery. There was somebody at my door. And I opened the door to answer it. And while I, oh, you know what? I think I went to get the package that the UPS guy delivered. And that poor UPS guy, because I opened the door, my dog took off running after him. I'm screaming, don't worry, he's friendly, which you know is code for my dog's going to eat you. Um, and this little booger jumps to this poor man's truck. So here he is, sitting in the passenger side of the UPS truck, expecting this poor man to drive him around. Now, luckily, I had a very nice UPS driver. Um, I felt so bad for having the little black and white booger behind me run out of the house after him because he was so excited to see him. And then after I first got him a couple of years ago, he, uh, of course, escaped out of the house because he's, he's a weasel. We've gotten good at this point at not letting him escape. Um, but it was, it was a little rough there the first 
first couple months he was with me. And uh, sure enough, he goes running down the street. I go walking after him because you don't want to chase a dog that's running. And uh, a lady stops her car because she's driving up my cul-de-sac. And she looks like she's going to get out to try to help me get my dog who's being a booger and running up and down the street. He sees her stop the car and she rolls down the window. And he decides that he wants to try to jump through her driver's side window. I don't know why my dog's so friendly. I don't know who raised him to be that way, but he wants to get into every stranger's car. One of these days I'm going to let him. All right, banana bread's in the oven. Where are we going next? Let's do this guy. I guess I need the recipe on. So we're going to do, we're gonna make some space. My bagels are raising, are rising like nobody's business over there. I don't need that, I do need this. So we are going to do cream cheese, eight ounces. That's a whole little container here. Cream cheese works best at room temperature because it's easier to smash into a bajillion little pieces. We don't want chunks. We want it to be creamy. Use room temperature. It doesn't take that long. Don't put it in the microwave. You don't want cooked. I guess if you cook cream cheese, you get cheesecake. I don't like cheesecake. All right, the reason my garlic powder was out. Don't want to overpower it. I'm gonna do a little onion powder. This says to use dill relish. I am not, I'm just not. We're gonna ignore that part. And we'll set that there. Mom's leftover Easter ham. I'm glad my mother still loves me enough to bring me leftover ham. So this has half a pound of deli ham. How about not on a knife covered in nuts? So we'll make sure we'll cut off the big old chunks of fat from my ham. It says deli ham. I think mom's ham is going to taste just as good, if not better. Alright, so it wants this cut into tiny little pieces because we are going to roll this around a tortilla. See, this is another thing that the food processor would be nice for. I need to call my boss. He needs to email my food processor back. Get off his butt and go buy a new one. I know they're expensive. But I get it. I do. I get it. But I want my food processor back. So if you had a food processor, you could just pulse this a couple times and end up with really tiny little nicely ground pieces. As long as your ham isn't too wet, you won't end up with a puree. is going. Quit reminiscing about my food processor. Who would have thought that's what today would have turned into? So we're going to chuck this in. <laughs> Make me some space on my cutting board. I wonder if chickens can eat ham. Probably not. I don't even think humans are supposed to eat ham. It's so bad for you. It tastes so good. So 
so one of these days, I have, I'm going to uh, make soap again. I haven't done it in a very long time. Um, I ended up with a lot of other hobbies that took precedent. And uh, I have been saving bacon fat to make my own soap with. So I have a jug of bacon fat in my refrigerator waiting to be turned into soap. I'm going to render it down. Have some fun with it. Who doesn't want to say they wash themselves with bacon fat? I know that sounds gross, but when you add the lye to it, um, it turns bubbly and not greasy. So this recipe also says to add cheese. We are going to add the cheese after we mix it up. We'll see how soft this is. I think I'm going to have to get the blender out. The mixer? The mixer. Yeah, it'll go faster that way. Pardon me, dude. gonna lick these beaters. That would bother me. Although if it doesn't bother you, knock yourself out. Put the ham away. Make myself some space here. There we go. Nice, creamy, and spreadable. And cheese. It is. This also says cheddar cheese. I got Monterey Jack. I just apparently did not like this recipe at all and wanted to change everything in it. Maybe I was feeling moody when I was at the grocery store. The cheese says I should have gone with the other cheese because it doesn't want to open. There we go. So one cup, that'll be about half a bag here. Get this guy in the refrigerator. And we'll mix everything in. I got the thinnest, fanciest little tortillas I could find. This says we're going to need four. We'll see how accurate that is. One of these days I'm going to make my own tortillas. I've done it before, but um, they 
these end up too thick. I can't make them thin like this. I feel like I'm missing something. Maybe patience. All right, so since we're supposed to make four of these, we will split this into fourths. And we're going to spread her out here. I can imagine if you put too much on here, it's not going to roll very nicely for you. So I know it looks kind of sparse, just remember you're going to be rolling the heck out of this. So you'll get the flavors whether you want them or not. And... And we roll. So I actually think, so you're supposed to cut these into a bunch of little rounds and it's supposed to be an appetizer, but I'm traveling with these things. So I think I'm just going to cut them in half and not into 14 little pieces. I think for my own sanity and uh, them not falling apart on the trip in, it's the best way to do it. So the fun thing about doing these as little appetizers is because, because of the cream cheese, they won't unroll on you. So they'll sit very pretty on your plate. These guys I'm going to stick in a Ziploc bag and put in my fridge for an example. So that they're already to travel with me. That will make a very nice lunch. Well, a couple lunches. Maybe lunch and a dinner. All right, I am going to go make sure that my um, grill isn't doing anything silly, like getting too hot. I will be right. All right, so my grill is very happily still sitting at 160 degrees, which makes me very happy. All right, sliders. I don't have a recipe for sliders. <coughs> They're pretty basic. 
But we are going to do some dishes first. <coughs> I'm going to keep up on it here. Otherwise, we'll end up with a giant pile of dishes and I won't want to do them. Which would be terrible because I'll be gone for three days and uh, you can't be leaving dishes in your sink for three days. That's just gross. And I don't think my roommate would appreciate it. Spices in the banana bread. Shame on you. Yeah, way too pre or preoccupied. I got all the cinnamon, nutmeg, all of it sitting here. Oh. We're gonna have normal people banana bread. That's what I get for following the recipe. Yes, I can. It's been a long week. It's really hot in my house. I could probably dehydrate the uh, beef and beef and fruit on my counter. You know, I got that swamp cooler up and running two days ago because I knew that I was going to be in the kitchen with the oven on for hours, right? And of course. That's what happens every year. I mean, it's always been something little. Belt here, water pump there. Just likes to misbehave. Can't help itself. It was probably original to the 70s. Like everything else in the house. Except the countertops. Countertops are not from the 70s. Alright. Let's make little sandwiches. So if I was making these for a party or for dinner, I would go ahead and put mayonnaise and mustard on them now. We're not going to do that. I'm going to put it in little containers and take it with me. Because I don't want to have soggy sandwiches. Chickens. I love tomatoes. So I have tried growing tomatoes. Um, when I lived in California, they grew really well. Um, they actually would grow in the cracks of the concrete like weeds. It was kind of a crazy thing. And um, once I moved out here, it's, I think it's just too dry. So I can grow big, beautiful tomato plants that produce two tomatoes and take a massive amount of water. So I have no interest in growing them here. Now, I say that, and I've got a bunch of tomato seeds on my counter, my other counter, because um, I thought I'd try again this year. Is it just me, or is produce at the grocery store starting to look really rough? like to think my chickens like lettuce but they don't. I'm going to feed it to them anyway because apparently I'm a jerk. But they are not the biggest fan. Cabbage? They don't want cabbage either. Before I bought the chickens, everybody said put cabbage on a string. They'll love it. No, they don't. Six. 
just make them all. I love these Hawaiian rolls. They're sweet, they're tasty, they're easy. Tastes really good with the fried chicken that they sell them with. Can I cut six at a time? Nobody knows. Then I probably should have stuck to three. We're going to squash these a little bit. There we go. All right. So I'm actually going to put these back into the container they came in because I think it's going to be perfect for traveling with because I can just set them in the cooler that way. We'll put the bag back around it. Everything will be great. We'll do our turkey. We'll make it a nice meaty one. So we'll fold them into four so they fit really cute there on top. And then we'll do a little lettuce and a little tomato. And if I don't eat, or if my friend and I don't eat all over, or these all over the weekend, I have a strange feeling they're going to taste just as good on Monday. But maybe not. They'll make a really, really nice midnight snack. Up late, talking to a bunch of nerds, drinking at the bar, going to nerd prom. My friend wants me to uh, do karaoke with him. I'm not the biggest fan of singing in public. I shouldn't say it that way. I was in choir in high school. But I kind of grew out of it. And I told him there was no amount of alcohol that was going to get me to sing at the convention. But I think he's pretty determined to give it his best shot. We're going to have to slice down these tomatoes. They're a little big. I contemplated getting Roma tomatoes, mostly because they're cheaper, um, but decided to go with the big guy instead. I forgot how small the sliders were. But we'll plop these on. And then once we're done with this, we are going to go on to our sugar cookies. And we are getting there today, let me tell you. Now to help keep these guys together, I did pull out the toothpicks. They are here somewhere. Or not. Maybe they ran away. Oh, I found them. Aha! So we'll plop the toothpicks in them. Help keep them together. Because I know me, and I'm going to end up holding this bag on its side, forgetting that they are not rolls. And that they are, in fact, sandwiches. Now I do have to remember to tell my friend that there are toothpicks in here because um, he might eat them. And that's a great way to ruin your convention. You know, somebody choking on a toothpick. So there we have them, a bunch of little sliders. 
Nice little snack for the hungry masses. Slide them back into the bag. Yeah. And then we'll put them in the fridge. Yeah, they should be good. I think with a little bit of mayonnaise and mustard tomorrow, so they don't care on Friday and Saturday, so they don't get soggy. All right, let's move on to some cookies. I think I should probably consult my list, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. All right, let's see here. Bagels over there, beef jerky in there, fruit leather also in the grill. Teriyaki beef in the grill, cookies. Look at that. We are cruising today. So let's make sugar cookies. We'll feed these guys to the chickens. Pardon me. I'm gonna get a bowl. I seem to have a lot of this stuff. So this next recipe is my all-time favorite sugar cookie recipe. I've never come across a better one. Um, it's actually a recipe that I follow almost to the T. I change it up a little bit here or there with the extracts. Um, I do like a nice almond extract. It says vanilla. You can do either one, depending on the flavor of the cookie. And then I'm going to show you um, a, I don't want to call it, the way my mother cheated with frosting when I was a kid. I don't like frosting sugar cookies. So in another life, I was a dog groomer and I ended up with carpal tunnel because that's what happens. And so holding the piping bag in my hand hurts after a while. So I can do some and I will suck it up for somebody's birthday cake every once in a while, but I really try to avoid it. So this particular uh, frosting recipe you actually put on and then bake and the cookies come out done how easy is that um, the frosting itself really doesn't taste like much it's just pretty the cookies themselves are going to come out in their own flavor which is why I switched the vanilla um, for an almond so this recipe I do have posted on my bake like a fluffy dot food dot blog it's under the sugar cookie recipe they're amazing they're cut out sugar cookies we're gonna do flowers. So these I'm not actually making for the convention. These I'm going to make for my HR lady because next Friday is HR Appreciation Day and I love her. Which is not ever something I thought I'd say. All right. And who am I kidding? I'm gonna take some of them to the convention. So. Two cups of butter that have been slowly melting on my extremely hot countertop. Go ahead, Boyd. Three cups of sugar. This will make a ton of cookies. We're actually gonna, also going to roll them out fairly thick. So there's three cups of sugar. Come here, eggs. I don't feel like reaching anymore. It's been a long day. Four eggs. Did I say four eggs? I'm saying four eggs now. That's why we feed the chickens. 
We're going to give this guy a mix-up. So for this recipe, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this smooth enough to roll out, but we'll see. I, might, I think I'm going to have to pull out the, the blender that I just put away. looking pretty and it smells so nice make sure we're off and away from fingers so I tend to be super cautious with um, mixers when I was a kid before I was a kid my grandma actually lost her finger to a big old mixer. Uh, lost the tip of her finger, not the whole finger, thankfully. So I tend to be extraordinarily cautious. I will never take the beaters off when it's plugged in. Ever. Ever. I still use one. I'm not that terrified of them, but I do respect them. They are not the safest utensil you have in your kitchen or tool you have in your kitchen. So, watch your fingers. Don't be silly. All right. So, this says we're going to go for the vanilla extract. We are actually going to switch it up to an almond, which I had to buy more of. Mostly because I'm not going to do a, a fancier um, buttercream type frosting on these guys. I can't get it open. Um, I'm going to do more of an egg wash frosting. So this will give it a little something extra to bring to the table. So I'm not going to be as liberal with the um, almond extract. It is whew, a little more potent than the vanilla. So if you've never used almond extract, it tastes and smells like a maraschino cherry. And I love to put it in my chocolate cakes and cupcakes and cookies. I mean chocolate. Chocolate and maraschino cherries. How can you go wrong? Um, come on. I'll get it. So this is the second extract, which is a funny one. And this is the only recipe I use it for. This is a imitation butter extract. So in case all of the margarine that we put in here, um, and if I wasn't feeling cheap, all the butter, wasn't enough. We are actually going to extra flavor it with some butter extract, which is a real thing. We could pretend like we're showing off makeup. Ooh, it's too dark in here. But anyway, um, butter extract's fun. Oh, that smells so nice. Okay. Seven cups of flour. Like I said, this is going to make a lot. The good news is I bought extra flour. You can always cut this recipe in half. Two, three, four, five, six. Let's just use the entire bag of flour today. We'll start there. If we need more, we'll add it. It's probably six and a half in here. So the reason this recipe is so large is because it expects you to make very large and thick um, cookies that you put on a stick. I'm going to make very large and thick cookies. I am not going to put them on a stick. But if you wanted to make smaller, thinner cookies, and maybe not as many to make an entire basket, or feed the best HR lady in the world and her entire extended family, um, you can always have the recipe. It works out just fine. And the numbers are actually kind of nice. I mean, four eggs cut in half, there's two. 
You don't even have to do fun math. So let's throw in a little bit of salt before we finish mixing this and a little bit of baking powder. I keep losing my spoon. I keep putting stuff away so I can find stuff as we continue and it's just not <laughs> working for me. Uh, two teaspoons. Give this a good mix, but mostly I'm going to put it on my countertop. because we're going to have to roll this out. So we might as well treat it like a bread here for a sec. We'll give it a good mix with our hands. Not quite like you would a bread, but close. So I can tell that because um, I stuck in half a cup less, we are way too soft here. I mean, we're just falling apart. So let me grab some clean hands and I am going to grab my bag of flour and we're going to add to this until it's the right, right consistency. I'm already making a mess. It's going to get worse. Let's see if we can't poof a little here. I mixed in a little bit here. So you want this dough to be soft. You definitely don't want it to be stiff. You are going for a very, very classy Play-Doh. I'm into Play-Doh lately, apparently. Um, so think classy Play-Doh. The name brand stuff that you only got for Christmas. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, so when we pick it up, we're still we're still falling apart a bit, which is good, but we're definitely not sticky. It might still be a little soft. Let's add a little bit more flour here. There we go. I think it's so hot in here that my butter is having a hard time. This is one of those days where putting the dough in the refrigerator is not necessarily a bad idea. When it's cold in my house, I don't worry about it. And I'm not going to worry about it today. But we need to be aware that we might need a little bit of extra... A little bit extra flour to keep it holding together. There we go. So let's do half at a time. We'll set that guy to the side. Make ourselves some room. Flour our counter so we don't get stuck. I always drop it, pick it up, put the flour back down, and drop it again. I have been known to stick this stuff to the countertop, even after I flour it. Because all the flour picked up on the dough. So I'm going to very gently here. Roll this guy out. So I do roll these cookies out a lot thicker than my mother ever would. 
Don't tell her. I like to roll my gingerbread cookies out thick too. And my dog is eating flour off the floor. I got a cleanup crew. So I always dip these guys in flour that's on the counter. They'll, they'll stick. So we're going to start on the outside edge and put these as close together as we can. The more that you roll the dough, the more flour that you end up adding, and the harder the cookie ends up being, which today may not be a bad thing, but we'll see. I'm glad you're the cleanup crew, but you could wait until I was done. I almost couldn't find a spatula. Alright, so we are going to plop these cookies on the cookie sheet. Don't let me put them into the oven. I am trying really hard over here to do that. And then I'm going to have to frost them the real way, and I don't want to. So hopefully I have enough pans. I'm not going to have enough pans. I never have enough pans. I keep buying pans. It's just not working. Two pans in the grill. That's where two of them went. the stones out here in a sec. We're going to add half of the dough that we left on the side. Make a little more of a mess here. The dough's not sticking. Um, really at all. Pick it up, dust it back under. Oh, I'm dropping flowers and flower. Oh my goodness. Oh, I have a bulldog who, I don't know if you can see her, is currently under my feet. There she is. And then I also have a Border Collie Corgi mix. Who's right here. I am going to knock those cookies down. He's a black and white one. The brown and white one is the bulldog. The bulldog is Lily. She's 13. She's new to me. She managed to outlive her family. Uh, Boyd is a Border Collie mix guy. He is four now. I got him when he was two. Um, his poor mother needed a lung transplant, and uh, he was a bit much for her, so that's how he ended up in my life. And he does a good job. He takes care of my chickens for me. And they both take care of the flour that I drop on the floor. Mm. Oh, let's be risky. I bet I can fit eight on there. Mm. Thank you. I absolutely adore them. My dogs are the absolute loves of my lives. Even if Lily likes to stand behind me and try to trip me. Excuse me. So, I do love baking stones. They're fun. They do take longer to cook. Oh, banana bread. 
but the banana bread's done. Where's my... There it is. Look at that. Was that good timing or what? I don't have enough counters. Can you put hot food on that? I'm gonna go walk this the other way. Give me a second. <laughs> so I just recently installed a um, an additional cabinet space, and what I think used to be a breakfast nook um, did not put granite countertops on that one. I did the uh, the butcher block, but it's way over there. But I don't want my cookies to get hot. So you don't really want to store your cookies on um, the stove top when your stove is on because then the cookies are going to start cooking and the butter is going to start melting and then you're going to end up with a gooey mess of a cookie. So even in my ridiculously hot house, we're going to try to keep them as cool as we possibly can. Stop licking my feet. All right, so we're going to take the last quarter of our dough here. We are almost done with the cookies. Well, we're almost ready to frost the cookies. Do I have food coloring? I really hope I have food coloring. If I don't, this is going to be really embarrassing. Although I'm going to need a ladder because the food coloring is above you. Ha! I didn't drop flour on the floor that time, you two. So I have these really cute Star Wars cookie cutters, and, and I'm going to a nerd convention. Star Wars, Star Trek, Star Trek, holy moly. Might need to drink something. Um, they've got a, a horror thing that goes on there too with horror movies and all that jazz. And uh, the cookie cutters suck. They're terrible. I do not like the Star Wars cookie cutters I have, and it makes me sad. I feel like this is something I should have in my life. But no, the dog bone shaped cookie cutters are great, and the fire hydrant and all those ones, you know, for when you're feeling extra special and making your dog's cookies. Um, but yeah, no, Star Wars cookie cutters don't do well. Or at least the ones I have. So if anybody knows of ones that actually cut out nicely, send them my way. Send me a link. Email me. I don't care. Drop it on my blog. Leave me a comment. Bake like a fluffy dot food dot blog. Check out the recipes right here there, but mostly drop me a, a good link for a, a nice set of nerdy cookie cutters. Somebody has them. All right. I am dinging all over the place. So I can fit one more cookie here. So we're gonna half-heartedly roll this out so that we can cut one out and then we're gonna set the rest of this to the side. Because I need my counter space back. Yeah, I don't have any more pans. All right. Oh, you know what we can do? I have a lot of cookies. Let's roll this up. We're gonna stick it in oh, wax paper. Where are you? Forget it. We're gonna put it in a ziploc bag. Oh, we're gonna stick it in the freezer. That way, when I feel like making these cookies again, all I have to do is pull them out of the freezer and defrost them. 
and then I don't have to make more. I mean, they have two and a half dozen cookies. The, I love the HR lady, but maybe not that much. Clean off my countertop here, at least half-heartedly. Clean up my hands, and then I'm going to show you how to frost these before you actually bake them. This is a lovely trick. It's, I don't even know where my mother found it. I bet it you, I bet you anything it's in the Joy of Cooking cookbook. Everything's in the Joy of Cooking. Um, but don't quote me on that. I don't think I ever saw her pull out a recipe for it. This is one of the few things that she could do from memory. And it's because it's so simple that, I mean, seriously. And it was my absolute favorite things to do as a child because I got to use a paintbrush in the kitchen. Do I have a paintbrush? No. No. Why would I have a paintbrush? Um, so we're just going to use, I don't know what we're going to use. Fingers? Sure. Let's use our fingers. Let's finger paint some cookies. We're going to put them in the oven. We'll cook them. Maybe I'll use a spoon. Um, so... You can always buy the cheap paintbrushes from, oh, I do have paintbrushes. I'll have to go get them on the back. Um, use the cheap paintbrushes you get from the dollar store, the little plasticky ones with the, the really thick plastic um, bristles. They work great. The grill's looking good. It's still sitting at 160 degrees. <coughs> oh look, I do have food coloring in here. What color would I want to do it? Green, red? Yellow, blue. All right, so this is super simple. You're gonna take an egg. We want the egg white, right? Yeah. All right, and we're gonna take the egg whites putting it in two separate bowls for two separate colors. I know I called it a frosting. It's an egg wash. Um, but it leaves a nice little glaze on top of your cookies. And I like blue. So 
So we'll add some blue, and then we'll add some red to the second one, because I like red too. And then we're going to add about a tablespoon of water to thin it out just a little bit. And we're going to mix them up. Should have grabbed a fork. Didn't grab a fork. I'm going to grab a fork. There we go. So there's our red frosting. And there's our blue. And I don't have a cheap paintbrush. I apologize. So you're just going to take it and we are going to, I don't like this paintbrush. You need a cheap paintbrush, they work the best. We're just going to spoon this on. Ooh, that one's still mixed with the red. And we're just going to give ourselves this nice little color that will eventually be just blue once I get the red off of the back of the spoon. So when I was a kid, I would painstakingly take the paintbrush and decorate the heck out of these things. Like I'm pretty sure I would spend an hour um, putting egg on top of raw cookies. And I would decorate the outside edges, put dots on them. I had so much fun. I loved this as a kid. And then of course I grow up and I end up being in a hurry and I don't want to spend the next six hours frosting cookies. We're going to put sprinkles on them. So sprinkles before you bake are fun. Sometimes they melt, um, sometimes they don't. So one of my favorite things to put on these types of cookies are the little um, Red Hots, the little round ones that you can find in the baking aisle. Um, the hot red cinnamon candies that my mother only brought out for Christmas. They actually melt on these things and you end up with this wonderful kind of hard cinnamon crunchy candy on your cookie. They don't look very pretty but I loved them as a kid. We'll put those in the oven. We'll do another tray of blue. And I have three trays back there that we'll do of red. So with these, you'll end up with like a, a very glossy top on top of your cookie. That's just pretty and colorful and that's probably too much. Um, it just gives a little shine, a little shine, a little color without all the hassle of making a buttercream frosting, which isn't really the most difficult frosting in the world. But sometimes you're trying to make cookies and bagels and sandwiches and wraps and, oh, graham crackers. We're going to make graham crackers next. And you really don't want to spend hours and hours frosting cookies and making them look gorgeous. You're welcome. This is honestly one of my favorite uh, frosting recipes. And like I said, if you have kids, they'll have a blast. Give them the cheap plastic paintbrushes in like six colors. 
Maybe not six colors. I hear eggs are going to be a little scarce here soon. kind of a purple here until the blue comes off. If you're fussy, use a different spoon. This is so relaxing and so slimy. <laughs> Just glides across the cookie. There's absolutely no effort involved here. Um, if you're using a paintbrush, make sure you don't press down on the paintbrush too terribly much. You can divot your cookies. I don't have any right now, but those... Um, log-like chocolate sprinkles. I love on these things. They end up kind of doing a crunchy... No? It's more of a soft and creamy coating on top of them when they melt down. They're good. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this kind of thing with gingerbread cookies. Um, if you watched my December stream, I made um, gingerbread cookies and I did a, it's an almond bark. You melt it in the microwave and you drizzle it on top. Makes it so you can stack the cookies. Granted, you can stack these cookies too. Um, dries really fast. You can make a... Uh, swirly designs and stuff on your cookies so that it looks like you it took a whole lot of effort to make them and the uh, almond bark tastes really good on a gingerbread cookie that's how i i get away from having to deal with my carpal tunnel for christmas and if you're feeling super fancy you can take the chocolate almond bark stuff and do the same thing and swirl it in chocolate and uh, white chocolate Here we go. Getting our sprinkles on top. Give us a little more sugar, because could you use any less sugar on a sugar? No. No. Do all the sugar. All right. So, while those are in the oven, I'm going to set these behind me. And then we'll start our gingerbread after I do some dishes here. dump this guy over before it gets stuck. Oh, is it too late? You get busy making something else and your banana bread sticks to the pan. Every time. So these blue pans are new to me. Um, I actually bought them for my mother because she said she needed new pans and these were supposed to be like super non-stick that you can also stick in the dishwasher. They actually aren't so bad. I didn't spray the pan and my bread came out okay. Alright. I'm going to set this behind us too because I'm going to need the counter space. I need all the counter space. 